Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at global development, focusing on the environment and development. The increased urbanization and industrialization of the developing world has led to increasing environmental issues and pressure points, but this is not new. During the Industrial Revolution in Western Europe, there was increased environmental degradation as the impacts of industrialization, such as pollution, harmed the local environment. Increased travel, overpopulation in towns and cities and the burning of fossil fuels in factories all contributed towards environmental degradation. However, this was largely focused on Western Europe. In today's more global society, with greater movement and the expansion of industrialization across all continents, development has become a global environmental issue, with increased travel and transport of goods, increased production and consumption, and the need for land for industrial and agricultural production, all creating environmental issues. One of the key pieces of research into environmental issues was conducted by Kingsbury et al, who identified a range of environmental issues that are accelerating at an alarming rate as a result of development policies. Firstly, deforestation. This occurs for many reasons, including the need for timber, but also due to the need to clear land either for human habitation as cities and towns expand, industrial production, or for grazing for livestock. Deforestation has severe impacts, not only for the species that live there, but because forests produce much of the oxygen needed for survival on this planet. Furthermore, forests absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide, removing this harmful gas from the environment and replenishing it with oxygen. Furthermore, Kingsbury et al. identify pollution, both water and air pollution, as an environmental issue. This is more pronounced in the developing world, as stricter regulations in, the West, in Western Europe monitor pollution from industry. In the developing world, these regulations can often be circumvented through lobbying governments that are less powerful than many transnational corporations. As a result of this, and lower wages, Many TNCs locate their production centres into the developing world, allowing them to avoid costly green legislation and maintain higher profit margins. As a result, local people have to contend with polluted rivers and wells that are contaminated with cleaning products, harmful elements and toxic waste. It was estimated that in 2012, almost 800 million people had limited or no access to clean drinking water. A further environmental issue is that of desertification or land that has become infertile and unusable for agriculture. Dependency theorists argue that desertification has increased due to the imbalances in trade relationships between the developing world and the West. As Western consumers have more choice in who supplies them with primary goods, this drives down the prices of those goods as there is an increase in supply. This results in farmers trying to produce more goods for sale just to make ends meet, resulting in over farming the land and making it infertile. This has long term impacts for food production, leading to scarcity of some goods in the developing world. This situation is made worse as large suppliers such as the USA import their excesses to the developing world, undercutting local producers and driving them to produce more for less. This ultimately leads to driving them out of business or making their land unusable. Elwood highlights a further environmental issue caused by a combination of pollution, desertification and deforestation, and that is of species extinction. With the destruction of their natural habitat through deforestation and poisoning through the increased pollution or removal of food sources through desertification, it is estimated that over 816 species have been made extinct over the past 500 years. The average rate would be one species per four years, but at present rates, 1.6 species become extinct every year. Environmental issues that exist are simply the tip of the iceberg according to sociologists and ecologists. There are several environmental pressure points that have been examined over the past 50 years. Elrich argued in the 1960s 
that population growth would lead to a shortage of resources, eventually meaning that there would be not enough food to feed the population of the Earth. Elwood argued that the inequality and poverty felt in the developing world made it more difficult to push forward environmental policies as much pollution, deforestation and desertification is conducted out of necessity, either due to debt from aid or in order to make ends meet as prices fall as a result of market interference. Furthermore, Chakravarti argues that debt is one of the prime motivators of deforestation, citing both deforestation in the Amazon and Cameroon, where over 75% of woodland has been cut down to repay debt. Dependency theorists often point to the inequality in consumption as a key factor in environmental pressure points. Almost 40% of the world's resources are consumed by the USA alone, despite only 3% of the population living there. It's estimated that by 2050, China too will have reached a similar level of consumption. Furthermore, the growth of capitalism has generated environmental pressure points. Increases to the carbon footprint of goods as they move from production centres on one continent to distribution centres in another, and these impact on air pollution. The expansion of industrialization in the developing world also means increased usage of non-renewable sources of energy, such as fossil fuels like coal, gas and oil, which are also largely found in the developing world. Finally, Elkington argues that without a commitment to sustainable development, the population faces extinction in the future. Now, development policy has looked to address the issues and tried to make commitments to sustainable development, but with little success. Most recently, the COP26 conference looked set to adopt the use of renewable sources of energy until at the last minute, some of the large industrialized nations refused to commit to phasing out the use of fossil fuels. This is the latest in a long line of failed attempts, with the Brundtland Commission in the late 1980s looking to promote sustainable development policies, yet despite bold commitments, targets were not met, and the impact of international governmental organizations such as the World Bank hampers further progress. Foster argues that it is aid and debt that is one of the biggest obstacles to sustainable development, as nations are forced into practices that put profit over the environment. However, there is hope, with many non-governmental organisations being able to implement small-scale projects to provide clean water, planting trees, and using technology to improve food yields without causing desertification. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on global development, looking at the environment and development. Thanks for watching.